Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's doing good. Hey, I'll take a couple of seconds to remind you, hit like, subscribe, share the videos if you're getting, con getting uh, value out of the content. We're, we're trying to upload things a couple times a week and uh, just, just building up life, man. Creating nuggets for people, hopefully giving some thoughts and things that will help shift some perspectives and changes. So I'm headed back from North Carolina. Uh, I wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about some things. Um, just like I'm doing the business series, I'm trying to hit, I, I want to hit several topics, but you know, with the business side, I want to hit that. I want to hit the spiritual side. But also, I want to talk about marriage a little bit. Um, you know, my, my wife and I have been married about eight years. We're a blended family. But I want to share with guys, husbands, I want to talk to you directly, man, just how to love your wife well. And it's going to look a little different than what you may think. Um, you know, when we were growing up, our parents, they did their best, right? You know, they were, most parents do their best. Some parents are crap, and that sucks. And that's a that's a card that you have been dealt. And man, that, there's ways to get freedom from some of those things, the resentments and the... You know, feeling like you're not enough or that you were left or that you're not alone all of those things you can gain freedom from those things it's not easy it is and it ain't you know so but anyway um when we're seeing our parents grow up a lot of times we can take the habits and the things that they did in their marriage and we'll bring it over in our marriage without even realizing we did it right uh, you know as parents i'm i'm 35 my wife's 34 and we're raising kids uh we're still growing we're still learning how to be good human beings you know uh, we don't always get it right, and we've told our kids, look, guys, we're going to make mistakes, and, and we sometimes don't react to things well, and we need y'all to know, hey, we're not, we don't have it all together, right? So one of the things that growing up my dad did, he worked a lot, uh, which, man, thank God he did, right? Uh, he didn't he didn't mean to be away a lot. You know, he, he worked a lot, and he thought that was what he was supposed to do, and he, he is responsible for me being who I am today. Um and I'm so thankful. I have a great mom. I have a great dad, and, and I love them both very much. But one of the, you know he worked, and that was just what he did. And that was what was modeled for me. So I got married uh, at a younger age. I've been married twice. It's my second marriage, and my first one it didn't end well. It didn't go well, uh, and it you know that sucks, and that was hard. I don't wish divorce on anybody. That's a it, that's a tough situation, you know. But um, part of me, I, I got married, and I was young, and I you know, I didn't know how to be a man or how to be a dad. I just was kind of stupid you know what I mean <laughs> so if I got stressed I would go to work uh, one because it was what I saw and two I was good at work you know uh, I know how to work I, I, people around me respect me and I'm really good at what I do and a lot of times I'm kind of the boss which is cool you know so people respect you and, um, at, at home I felt inadequate I didn't feel like I was doing a good job at home and I didn't know why I didn't you know, at work, everybody likes me. I come home and I get yelled at or I don't do this right or you, you complain or whatever, you know. So what it boiled down to, though, was my wife at the time, she was struggling mentally with some things and things that she had been struggling with for decades. Just hadn't, some of it had absolutely nothing to do with me. Some of it did, you know, uh, and I've, I've got to take my responsibility for that part. But, uh, you know, I, me going to work and then coming home, you know, it caused me to feel like I was a failure as a husband because I would come home and she would be upset or she'd be frustrated or she'd be angry and it's like she'd fall off the handle. What the crap? What just happened? I'm just going to go back to work. Screw this, you know? And that was a terrible thing because when I left, she felt abandoned. She felt like she wasn't loved and wasn't cared for. And it was just this crappy cycle we didn't even know we were in, you know? Um, so anyway, fast forward. I've been married the last eight years to the same woman. Love her to death. Her name's Shauna. She's amazing. Um, how do you love her well? one of the things I took from my previous marriage is I had I decided there's not going to be anything that I'm not going to talk to my wife about because I want to have the best relationship I want to have the most fun the most laughs the best sex the best enjoyable time with my wife ever and I'm just not going to settle for anything less so before my wife and I even got married she knew really quick how blunt I was and I'm not rude or mean or hateful by any means. I don't, but I like, hey, I don't want to do this. I'm doing this. I want to do, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Um, one of the things that it causes, though, is you, to love your wife well, you have to trust her. And that's weird because you think, well, that's not really doing anything for her. It does a lot for her. Women are far more emotional than men, obviously, and that's okay. That's, that's how you've created. Cool with that. Men understand that you're not as emotional as women, and certain things that they do will not make sense to you, but certain things that they do will not make sense to them. You know, so that, both of those things are okay if you accept that. But I had to, in order to love my wife well, I had to trust her enough to be honest with her and talk to her. And I had to trust that she wouldn't look at me differently for being honest with her. 
case in point, um, I, I dealt with anxiety, like panic attacks and stress and this, I'm an entrepreneur, I build businesses, I, I'm accountable to people, build people account on me, just a lot of crazy stuff happening in life, right? So doing that, well, I didn't know, and I started finding myself going to that pattern of, you know, working more, working more, working more. And then she and I had started having conversations like me and my first wife had, and I remember how that ended not well. So I started looking and saying, God, what in the world am I doing, man? Um, and it was just like I get hit in the face. Like, you're not loving your wife. Well, you don't trust her. It's like, I trust her. What do you mean? She's not going to cheat on me. Not like, yeah, well, you don't trust her enough to talk with her about the things that you're struggling with. In order to love your wife well, you have to trust her enough to tell her about the things that you're struggling with and trust that she wants to see you do your best in every area of life. And if it requires her to help you carry some of that burden, stressful, emotional things, then you have to trust that she's gonna do that. She has got to love you well, just as much as you have to love her well, right? So in order to do that, I went to my wife and said, look, I am struggling. Um, I'm having panic attacks, I'm freaking out, I feel like I'm dying, I don't know what's going on. I need help and I don't know how to get it, right? Uh, and I'm a smart guy. It's not like I'm an idiot. You know, I'm, I'm a fairly intelligent redneck, you know, so, but I don't understand some of the emotional things as well as I would like to, right? I, I try and I've, I've been learning. I've done much better over the last couple of years, but she began to help me and pour into me and sow into me and love me through that kind of stuff, right? Uh, I, when I came to her and, and kind of shared those things with her, it was hard for me because I felt inadequate as a man. I felt like, hey, I'm not I'm not carrying my crap well enough. I'm losing my mind here. You know, how am I gonna go to my wife and tell her that I'm struggling mentally when the reality is I'm supposed to be helping her and, and be her strong tower, right? Well, I, I was taking on far too much that I wasn't really meant to carry by myself. And God created us to have help mates, not help servants or not, you know, not just people that we sleep with and and talk to every now and then you know he created us to have helpmates and just as i have got to lean on her for support emotionally mentally she has leaned on me for support emotionally mentally physically all the things you know so in order to love each other well we have to trust each other and know that we're not going to walk out just because you have a mental issue right the worst thing you can do men as to when you have something going on emotionally or stress wise or anything is begin to handle it outside of your marriage because if you do you're going to end up cheating on your wife, you're going to end up drunk, you're going to end up high, you're going to end up working too much, you're going to end up any of these things, right? All the ways that men cope with stress and anxiety when they don't feel like they can go to their wife. And they go to other people because they think, well, you don't really know me, so I don't have to answer to you. When I don't want my wife to think less of me, right? When in reality is, she's going to look at you as a strong tower no matter what. She's going to look to you and say, wow, he's a strong man. And dealing with your emotions is a powerful tool, guys. We've got to begin to deal with our emotions, to deal with the stress and anxiety. We have to deal with those things in a, in a healthy way. We have to feel it. You know, part of being a man is there is a little bit of suck it up and deal, right? Just and the, and it should be some of it. You got to suck it up and deal, but not all the time. It's okay to break. It's okay to have some weakness. It's okay to cry. It's okay. All those things are okay. None of that makes you less of a man. I'm 6'3", 240. I'm a big boy, you know? I'm not a weak man because I go to my wife and tell her that I'm stressed out. I'm not a weak man because I go to therapy. I'm not a weak man because I have panic attacks. None of those things are the case. Some of it is the opposite of it. I carry so much, and sometimes I don't carry it well, but I carry a lot with me. And in order to deal with those things, I've had to learn ways to positively deal with it. I've had to pull off and shed some of that stress, and that anxiety. Uh, and a big portion of it is loving my life, loving my wife well. And if you go to your wife, guys, and you say, look, I'm struggling, I'm having a hard time, and she doesn't know the answer, it does not mean she don't love you. It may literally mean she has no clue how to help you. But together, you guys can talk and say, look, I wanna help you, I don't know how. Well, I need help, and you don't know how to help me, we gotta find somebody. Well, let's go to a counselor, let's go to a therapist, let's go to a, a family friend, let's go to a pastor, let's go to somebody that we can talk to and begin to make those steps to get yourself well, right? Uh, you want to love your wife well, you want to love yourself well. All those are important things. So, all right, guys, I hope you got some value out of the content. I hope you got uh, some encouragement, some hope. And, and if you are struggling mentally, physically, or emotionally, I pray in the name of Jesus, God will just come down and touch you and give you the strength to reach out to somebody that can help you with it and get you over the, the hurdles of dealing with stress and anxiety and panic, you know, and fear. Uh, just pray that he'll give you some relief from that, that you wouldn't feel inadequate as a human being or as a man because you got to reach out because 
God created us to do community together. So, uh, man, make sure to like, subscribe, share the content if you get value out of it. We really appreciate it. We're excited about all the things going on. Until next time. All right, guys.